Okay, I'm back with another haunted hidey hole. Somebody in my comment section suggested that I do a toy shop with possessed toys, and I love that idea. So I had a bit of trouble settling on the color of this toy shop. First, I painted it cheese it orange, which was hideous, and then I went blue, which turned into rainbow, which would be fine, but it's not exactly scary unless you find a rainbow that has puked all over a box scary. So then I started over and went with this mercury green. My idea here was, you know how they used to make green paint with mercury in it and everybody would get mercury poisoning, but nobody cared because the green paint was gorgeous. Well, I thought that would be creepy. So that's why I did the green, which don't worry, I paint over it white later. I mean, when you think of a toy shop, what color do you think? I guess, I guess I could have gone with primary colors. That would have worked, but it's too late now. I went with this weird green white concoction. It's, it's fine but you can't have a clean floor. So I made it dirty and added all this red stuff, which is probably just strawberry jelly. But then I added black mold to the corners because this is a creepy haunted possessed toy shop. And what's more scary than black mold? In fact, maybe that's how they get possessed is the black mold gets into the dolls and toys and stuff and it possesses them. I don't, I don't know. I'm not a moldologist. Maybe that can happen. Wasn't that like a video game only not with toys? Do we know how Chucky really got possessed? Actually, I think, I think we do know how he was possessed. I'm pretty sure that was in the movie. Anyways, I'm just adding some shelves to my shop and these little square shelves because they are the perfect size to hold little toys and trinkets. Knickknacks, tchotchkes. I always thought that was a weird word. It almost sounds dirty, but not really. Anyways. Ooh, look at me make these little bags. They're so cute. I mean, the customers have to have something to put the toys in to take home, right? Which reminds me, is paper better than plastic? I've heard that it actually takes more resources to make paper bags than it does plastic bags. But I, I have no idea. I would love to know the statistics on that. Because in the store, whenever they ask, I just tell them whatever's easiest for you. If I knew that one was better than the other, then I would definitely use that one more. I mean, granted, I could buy my own reusable bags, but then you gotta remember them. And my memory is not that good. Oh, and then we need a cash register, right? Gotta keep all that money somewhere. I mean, assuming that there's a big demand for possessed toys. Actually, there might be a demand for possessed toys. I guarantee that on eBay right now, you can buy at least 20 haunted dolls. Now, whether or not they're actually haunted, I don't know. I think you might be getting ripped off, at least on like 97% of them. Holy cow. I just looked up on Google on how many like haunted dolls that you can buy. I, 20 is way underestimating. You can buy way more than 20. I wonder how many of them are real. And then I know you're wondering, where are all the toys? This is supposed to be a toy shop. Well, I'm about to create one right now. I'm taking the spring from this pen. You know, Emily's got to check it out. She, she's always doing something. Anyways, can you guess what I'm making? I know, you already know what it is. It's a Jack in the Box, which who thought that that was a good toy for a kid? Those things don't even need to be possessed to be scary. Just traumatizing babies with surprise clowns popping out of boxes. I guarantee that there are a few people with Jack in the Box trauma living in this world. I mean, are Jack in the Boxes the source of people's clown fears? It surely didn't help. And then I'll spare you the details on this one. I just made a Rubik's cube. Don't worry, we will get into scary toys. I don't know why I started off with a bunch of vanilla toys. Like this board game. It's so boring. It's a board game. Actually, this one's not that boring. I tried to think of board games that would be kind of traumatizing. And I thought about Monopoly because, you know, everybody fights over Monopoly. And then I was thinking maybe Operation because that game scares me. That buzzing noise is way louder than it needs to be. But then I settled on Jumanji because this is a box about toys with a mind of their own and Jumanji definitely fits that. And then the second game that came to mind was Risk. If you've played this game, you've probably had a fist fight over it. In in fact, my parents have a story about burning a risk board in a fireplace because they got into a huge fight over it. So I think it deserves a spot in this box for sure. And then I added this boring rocking horse. Don't worry, I'm getting to the good toys. Just hold on. See, we got the Hellraiser cube. That's scary. I'm pretty sure I watched that movie when I was way too young. Anybody else have like traumatizing movie stories? When I was 10, I loved scary movies and my mom took me to Event Horizon and I may have been a little bit too young for that movie. It's a great movie. I love it now. But back then we had to walk out of the theater. It's the only movie I've ever walked out of. Which now looking back on it with adult eyes, my childhood may have been atypical. That probably explains a lot. Anyways, back to this box. Okay, so I'm adding this creepy monkey because he's creepy and whoever thinks that these little guys are not creepy, there's something wrong with you. And look, this guy looks like he's been smashing something in between his symbols with all that red stuff there. I don't know, maybe he's been squishing strawberries. We don't know. Would you see that? He moved. And here you thought we were making a pretend possessed box. Ah. 
Anyways, we got some letter cubes, which it just looks like somebody tried to spell idea without the A, right? It doesn't spell anything else. And then I added this little tiger. Okay, the tiger's not creepy, I admit it, but he looks great. And nobody should tell him otherwise because that will hurt his feelings, okay? And between you and me, he's a little fragile right now, which who can blame him being in a possessed toy shop? And then I have these little dolls, which are, what is going on here? I did not know that this was going to be in the pack that I bought. So I just picked out two normal looking dolls, but I didn't want them to be half naked. So I painted little clothes on them. Look, he's like a little Ken James Bond. And then we have a Mrs. Ken James Bond Barbie. And then I made him a little cardboard box to make them so cute. And don't comment that you wish that there was a clear plastic over the top because trust me, I tried. I cut out a little clear plastic and I went to put it in, but I couldn't get it right. And then it wouldn't stay and it kept popping out. So trust me, they're not having clear plastic. It, you know what? It lets them move around better. But I separated them on the shelf because I'm pretty sure they're in a fight right now. And I didn't need any more drama in the store. And then I painted this little watering pot with red jelly inside. Look, I know how lame that is. So I put it at the top where nobody's actually going to see it. So it's fine. However, this mask is very creepy and I had to paint that and add it. And then of course I had to add a little red wagon. What toy store doesn't have a little red wagon? Look, I know you're saying that a little red wagon is not scary, but this one's possessed. You see this little red wagon? It runs over people. You know, kind of like that movie with the semi trucks that circle that gas station. I don't know. I think that was a movie. Well, this little red wagon circles the toy store. Honestly, I'm I'm just trying to see how many times I can say little red wagon and not make it weird. Is it weird yet? It's kind of weird, isn't it? Anyways, so this little red wagon goes around and it hits people or toys or strawberries. I don't know. See the, see the red stuff on the front? So either this toy store is abandoned or the person running it knows that all their toys are possessed because how could they not know? There's red stuff all over the floor and the toys. So that makes me believe that this person is selling these toys knowing that they're possessed, which I don't think is exactly a crime, but maybe it should be. Okay, so here's my theory. I think the shop owner, which we'll just call uh, Mr. Sardo, 10 points in a cookie if you know that obscure reference. So I think Mr. Sardo was experimenting on these toys with the supernatural, but it got out of hand and he can no longer control them. He tried destroying them, but they just come right back. You see that? He tried to cut the head off that horse. Okay, honestly, I don't know what good that would have done because the head was already cut off because it's one of those horse things that you ride around. I don't know. Maybe he's just really bad at destroying toys. Maybe the black mold is getting to him and affecting the way he thinks. Maybe that horse was more than just a head at one point and he had to make it into a head on a stick because he cut it off and it's still possessed and he had to put it on a stick. I, d I don't know where the story is going. And maybe this red bottle is the cause of all the red liquid in this shop. Somebody's opening pops that they were shaken. Somebody shook it. All right. So now I'm making this bear, but you know, look at, look at his head. That's right. There's two of them because he chopped off the head and it grew an extra one, making it 375% more terrifying. Or they just sewed themselves together. I don't know. Whatever. You get the idea. Every time he tosses them out, they just come right back. The only way he can get rid of them is to sell them to people who don't know that they're possessed. Because why would you willingly buy a possessed toy? The only problem is every time he opens up his shop, he's got to clean up all the, you know, re the red stuff on the floor. Well, that's probably not his only problem. I would think owning a possessed shop would be a problem in itself. And then I'm making this cute little train track for my creepy choo-choo train, which I was trying to think of a creepy name for a choo-choo train, and I can't really think of one. I mean, I guess there's the classics like a ghost train or terror train or something like that, but I was trying to think of like a boo-boo train, but that just sounds like it's hurt. Or a train that carries band-aids or something. Ooh, unless the train is the one that's causing the boo-boos, then it would be a scary boo-boo train, but it's still not scary enough for me. I think I'd end up laughing if I heard that the train was called a boo-boo train. I don't know. Maybe I'll just go with like the Nightmare Express because instead of sleepy train, it's nightmares coming to your door. I don't know. I'm sure you guys will have the perfect train name in the comments like always. And then I'll be like, where were you when I was making this video and I needed a train name? Anyways, we're moving on from the train. Thank God. Because that was getting embarrassing. So I made this little kitty toy. You know, like one of those toys where you stack the ring. I, it's not scary either, but move on. And then I have a totally scary bunny here. It's totally not, it's not just a normal bunny because
because this bunny used to be a magician's bunny who eats the hand that pulls it out of its hat, allegedly. And then when I wasn't looking, Mr. Double O Ken just started bleeding all over the box. But look where these bloody footprints lead, right to, that's right, Mrs. 007, aka Barbie. She's got blood on her hands. I don't know, maybe she had a good reason. Ooh, maybe they were playing Risk. <laughs> but this leads me to the leader of this toy shop, this creepy doll. I mean, look at its eyes. It can hypnotize you with those empty eye sockets for sure. Maybe that's why Mr. Sardo is so bad at destroying these toys. Like he goes to destroy them and then bam, he gets hypnotized by the leader of these possessed toys. But the leader of the possessed toys needs a weapon, a sharp weapon. Yeah, I know. Sharpening a weapon for a possessed toy seems like a really bad idea, but here I am sharpening this ax. I assume that it rides around the toy shop in the red wagon, swinging the ax all willy nilly. Where did the word willy nilly come from? Did Willy make it up or is Nilly a person? It, that's so weird. Okay, moving on. So the only way that I could incorporate a circle window into this box was to put it on this dollhouse. And it currently has two more circle windows than I do in real life. Not that I'm jealous or anything. Although if you see my husband, Jake, if you could just do me a favor and remind him how awesome circle windows are, that would be amazing. Thank you. And then I added some bugs to the wall and I painted them the same color as the wall on purpose so that it looks like the bugs are crawling under the wall. You know, like they do in horror movies. Only usually the bugs are crawling under the skin, but who's to say that the walls aren't made of skin? Ooh, that'd be creepy. Like the toy shop is made out of human flesh. Or no, the toy shop is alive and that's just the walls are its flesh. We don't know what Mr. Sardo is experimenting on. Maybe he experimented on the whole shop and everything inside is possessed, including the shop. I don't know, this story's really lame, I'm sorry. I can't promise that my next creepy crime scene story will be any better than this one, but fingers crossed. Now I was going to make the lid of this box into the front of the shop, but after I added the giraffes, hold on, I'll add the giraffes in a minute. The lid doesn't fit anymore. So I guess it goes lidless. I, I think that's fine. It's fine. Oh look, there's the giraffes I was talking about and a tiger, or I guess it's a lion. Anyways, I'm done. What do you guys think? Let me just do a zoomy zoom on these details. Ooh, look at those yummy details. What's your favorite toy in here? And did I miss any? Because I feel like I definitely missed some scary toys. I thought about adding a Chucky, but I thought that'd be too on point. Now I was gonna make the lid of this box into the front of the shop, but after I added the giraffes, the lid doesn't fit anymore. So I guess it goes lidless. I, I think that's fine. It's fine. <laughs> 